Hello friends, good morning and good evening everyone. This is your LP here. So today we are with our guest, uh, Mr. Marcin with us. So he is an electrical engineer. We can say the power system expert with uh, different uh, areas of uh, protection, arc flash, arc circuit study, and uh, many more topics. So he has his own uh, company, Mr. PowerTech. So he is doing many analysis for the clients and suggesting some uh, good uh, solutions uh, so that uh, the risk or hazards can be minimized in the site. So it's very interesting, guys. So we discussed uh, many good topics uh, in this uh, video. I hope you find this uh, video interesting. Yeah, please, please watch this video till the end so that you can get a better understanding. Yeah, so good morning. Welcome to our channel, ALP Talks. Sorry. Hey, good I'm, morning. Yeah, I'm also a little bit late again today. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No problem. Yeah, yeah. How are you? How are things going on? Yeah. Good, fine. Okay, okay. It's, uh, nice weather here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice, nice. Good, good. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm also good. Yeah, very nice. It's too hot here. So, <laughs> if I understand correctly, Ambati is a good one? Yes, 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 yes. yes. I am Ambati. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you work for ABB and now you have your own channel on YouTube? Yeah, I'm still working for ABB. Uh, yes, uh, as a knowledge sharing, uh, one day I got some thought that I should share some knowledge to some people, whatever I have. And uh, simultaneously, I started uh, interviewing some people like you who are in the industry, who have some experience. I, start, I started sharing those uh, people experiences also on this channel. So that's what uh, going on. Yeah, good, good. No, I saw a few videos, so they are very nice. Yeah, yeah, thank you. They are very you. useful. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I seen some uh, some of the uh, arc flash related, some of profiles of you. So the, I thought it's good to discuss with you. That's why I connected and messaged you. Thank you. Thanks for accepting the call and the invitation. And uh, so today we are here to discuss some stuff about uh, arc flash. So uh, are, are you going to share any pre the presentation which you shared to me? Yeah, 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 I can. Uh, or okay. you, you have to activate it. Yeah, yeah, I am activating. Yes, yes. Yeah, I activate it. Okay. Yeah. So, that will be this one. Yeah, yeah. Let me find it. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I think you should see it now. Yes, yes, I can see. Yeah, Martin, before, uh, I mean, let's talk general way, the, then, uh, because I am also new to this uh, area, arc flash study, I, the, uh, I have in my mind that any flashing or any flashover from one conductor or any conducting material to some nearby earth particle, or it is trying to, um, it trying to escape from the place. That's what I have in my mind. It, it may lead to some arcing or it may lead to some heat heat content or something like that. So that's what I think. So you st start your presentation so that uh, let's see how the concepts uh, changes. Yeah, so I will try to explain it in a brief, uh, let's say simple way. Yeah, yeah. Just to Please keep it proceed. short. Yeah. Uh, so. It's part of my presentation that I do for uh, webinars or customers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, bit of introduction about myself. Yeah, yeah, please proceed here. So my name is Marcin Luta. I, I'm more or less from 14, 15 years I'm working in engineering. Yeah. So I used to work for General Electric in Poland. Yeah. I'm currently based in Poland, but I do the car projects for the whole Europe. Okay. And then, uh, so I started in General Electric. I, I made actually switch gears, like you see in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For multiple customers. Then I then I shift to the industry, uh, like the maintenance manager, production okay. manager for a moment. Okay. Uh, and then I started really I come back uh, to electrical engineering. I, I designed the wind turbines. Yeah, yeah. For STX wind power at that time. Yeah. And then I shift to Eton for mm -hmm. last uh, seven years. Okay. Where Power system engineer and doing actually physically those all the studies, like power system studies for protection. And part of it was a big part of, was uh, arc flash. 
yeah, risk yeah. assessment. Yeah, yeah. Because it combines every uh, all studies together. Yeah, so yeah, and, yeah. And and now I run my own company since mm -hmm. two years. Okay. So I'm also very uh, into uh, developing the same topic in Poland. Okay. Just to bring it up uh, so people can actually uh, see it, understand it. Yeah, yeah. More. Mm -hmm. Because it's not very well known uh, uh, in Europe yet. Yeah. In some countries it's better, in some countries it's worse. Yeah. So I'm trying to work out uh, via LinkedIn or webinars uh, about it. Okay. So that's thanks for the invitation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome, welcome. Yes, dear. Very nice. Yeah, proceed. So, uh, very simple way. The main question is what Arclash is. Mm -hmm. And I usually I skip uh, uh, describing it. I prefer to show it, so you will see the video from uh, from test lab. Okay. Wow. Kind of uh, uh, short. I, I keep it short so we don't waste time. But yes, yes, but yes just yes. to give you explanation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was happening? Mm -hmm. So let me put the pin. Okay. So what you saw actually was this 19, it's between 5,000 to 19,000 degrees. So that's the thermal effect. Okay. When okay. The ionized gas, gas mm -hmm. uh, is creating the path for the for the arc to, okay. to travel mm -hmm. between electrodes. So mm -hmm. those two electrodes can be anything like the bus bus, but cable also. Uh, it can be something metallic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so between the face and metal parts or between okay. you. Okay. Okay. Uh, and we are actually most worried about the thermal energy because that's the yeah that is the main yes yes happen. yeah but also you, you maybe you saw maybe you didn't but you saw small flying particles mm. so that's copper or aluminium yeah if it's uh, melt or not so it can be solid or liquid and mm -hmm. uh, you also have a pressure wave so it's like explosion mm -hmm. which means something like uh, hundred up to hundred sixty decibels. Okay. And okay. under 140, you, you have an air damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, that's one of the thing. You mm -hmm. have intense light. So mm -hmm. it's very similar like welding, but uncontrolled. Yeah. So you have yeah. An intense light, and intense light is something like uh, hundred times if you look directly into the sun. Oh, okay. So okay. That's a lot. And yeah. also there is also UVA, UVB. So yes. that's why we have face shield in different colors. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. why actually they are in different colors because they will uh, take some UVA, UVB yeah. from us. Yeah. To protect the eyes. Mm -hmm. And there's also uh, uh, hot air rapid expansion. Okay. So there's two or three things in, in one because uh, the mm -hmm. because uh, aluminium and copper expands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. So, because aluminium and copper will expand uh, a lot, going from um, uh, solid state to gas. Yeah. You, have, if this happens in switch gear, uh, creates a lot of pressure inside. Okay. And this pressure uh, can be a lot. Uh, a lot means uh, if it will exp expand or explode inside the panel, it will very fast open the door, and the pressure is so big that can actually. The damage is yes, yes. two meters away, yeah. but that very depends on the short circuit current. Okay. Uh, on the location. Mm -hmm. The other topic is uh, because of the thermal effect. At the same time, you see a lot of smoke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The arc. It's more uh, uh, how we build the switch gears. So from the materials point of view, they are okay. burning, so they create a toxic smoke, and that's something very bad to inhale. And when we talk about the inhale, there is also um, you have also hot air. This is not like five thousand degrees. Okay, it's hot enough. If you breathe in, then you have a lung damage, and that's something okay. which is very dangerous. So when we talk about the arc, okay, okay. So why it happens? Very uh, common source is the human error. Mm -hmm. so you probably see a bit more than I, but uh, very like this is like something not really hundred percent, ninety percent. It's more like 20, 30 percent. Mm -hmm. human error yeah and yeah. then you can have like wrong installation if someone doesn't see the difference this is not the fuse mm -hmm. no this is the copper bar <laughs> not the best way to protect I, i'm thinking like fuse <laughs> yeah 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 so they yeah. just look like 
Yeah. And you know the installation quality and wrong tools, because if you don't use wrong tools, especially on a high voltage, mini voltage system, mm -hmm. then there is much bigger risk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, water does expose electrical parts mm. if you can touch something. Okay. But actually, this one is the biggest uh, issue here. If yeah. you have exposed electrical parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then everything you can expect, you know, the corrosion damage. Mm -hmm. Like if you have an area where there are a lot of floods or earthquakes, you can expect physical damage more often, and then you can expect the air flash as, oh, as a result. Yes, 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 yes. Like here, maybe you don't see it, but there was due to over voltage on the line. You can see the there's a broken uh, isolation here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's easy to see, but and then of course animals like the we have rats, mouse. Maybe you can have uh, some snakes. In Australia, they have a termites. So there are a lot of things that can happen. Yeah, and, and this is not the. Uh, sometimes it's a direct reason. Sometimes it's just something in in the mid in between that is just pending, and then it's deteriorating or the insulation or something else. Yeah, and then it create the arc. Okay. And when it creates, it looks uh, like you saw the video, but this is from the real examples, like the small panel board on the low water side. Yeah, it was damaged, and this is completely burnt. No, okay. this is like a VT mm -hmm. the panel and. Or they done somewhere. Yeah. It is something usually if you don't have an active arc flash uh, quenching device, mm -hmm. like ABB, Eaton has it and Schneider, a lot of company has it now. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't have an active system which is very fast below five milliseconds, most of the time you have to uh, you have to remove and, and repair or or completely uh, uh, reinstall the system. Yeah, yeah. Because it the damage. Completely so we are actually in space. Yeah, we focus yeah. on the human safety. Oh, yes, we don't yes. focus on the installation in the first place. Yeah, we focus on how to get people away from it. Yeah, that's, that's what you what you mentioned that you know there is a time there is a blank and uh, and then people start to escape. There is also yeah. some assumption behind it, uh, and I will show it uh, in a minute that you can also escape you. But when we talk about these doors, an arc flash, if you have something like this. And you will be very unlucky, you will be hit by the door. I don't know, you are alone in the substation, then you will not escape. So that's why yeah. you also shouldn't. Know. That's true. And then this this can escalate, you know, some examples Excuse recent. Me. Okay. That was one in Poland. Okay. Uh, oh, completely blasted. Yeah, yeah. And we call it electrical fault. So electrical fault is more like, uh, how to say it, it is arcing fault. Okay. Because just the short circuit will not create the fire. Okay. Everything okay. which is arsenic fault create the fires. Yeah, yeah. And not fires actually. Uh, not in there are some. Uh, I don't have it here, but there are some statistics from UK. Mm -hmm. Much domestic accidents is happening. Domestic fires because of the electricity. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And that's what you can expect from the injuries. Uh, so I didn't warn you before. Okay. And that's more or less how it looks like. And yeah, from the big to the smallest one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, uh, easy to cure. You have to be lucky. Yeah, we should be lucky. Not the best thing to have. That's why we need some PPE at the end. Yeah, between us and electrical equipment. That's true. And as an example, uh, that's the best one I found. Uh, also short. Yeah, that's the best one I found uh, so far. That looks very nice way. <laughs> <laughs> so they are surviving it. They have the PPE. They just don't use the PPE the best way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know really mm. where this is happening. Yeah, because you asked me about it, but it's very hard to get yes, information. Yes, I understand. No one would like to really uh, show it. <laughs> yes, if you that's have an true. accident like this. Have a look that's, how it looks like. That's true. That's true. Yeah, there's a the yeah. reputation behind it, and and yeah, 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 yeah. I can understand it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also I can. Always try to. Yeah. yeah. So from so that's from the uh, how it looks like, but uh, from uh, uh, let's say mm. practical point of view, how you mm -hmm. handle it, mm -hmm. there are a few um, let's say uh, standards guides because they are okay. not actually standards. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. NCA70 is the National Fire Protection Association in US. Okay. And there was uh, this year there was new newest release. Okay. Six. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is really the guide for electrical safety in US. Okay. Very similar one is uh, in CSN in Canada. Okay. So Canadian standards. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit different because they are not the same. The same one is in Australia. They are adapted, mm -hmm. but not exactly 100%. Okay. So there are small differences in, in the location, but 
let's say us was the uh, and canada they were the first place where we saw this yeah like more yeah. than 30 years ago yeah 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 uh, uh, and this is a very complete way how to do such calculations okay okay we also had uh, now it depends on the level of voltage like from technical perspective now mm -hmm. if you look from the uh, voltage level yeah uh, there are some uh, boundaries for the equations that okay. uh, nfpa can refer okay uh, so normally they start from 208 volts in the us okay. to up yeah to EV. yeah yeah and then the and this is actually ieee 1584 okay like from 2008 that's the boundary of the uh, how the equation is uh, uh, let's say not too conservative so it okay. show you correct results if you go above then it's starting to show you too high results or too small usually too high so it's too conservative yeah and so that's what we have that's why there is also uh, epri so electrical power research institute also in the us they did a mm -hmm. lot of testing okay they made the technical report Okay. And this what uh, some of the software adapted, but some of the software is not. Yeah. They, uh, technically, there is also OSHA Appendix E. That is, which I, is more like, a similar thing. Like ISO. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's uh, they refer to the more or less same results. Yeah. Um, where you can extend your R hash calculation up to 400 kV or 800 kV. Okay. Systems. Mm -hmm. That's more or less coming because they introduced in US uh, this requirement for transmission system and they were not really aware about it at some point. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. And, and all of this is based on the, not all of this, but this is based uh, partly on Arc Pro, which is uh, separate software okay. modeling arcs on the physics level. Okay. So that's something we can use mm -hmm. if we go above 15 kV. And some of the software developers, they have their own, like ETAM, they have their own. Uh, way which you can actually calculate high voltage arcs which are very in line with those results mm -hmm. it's actually very very the same way okay oh and and this one can you can extend a little bit up to 36 kv level sometimes okay which is conservative but you can do it and yeah, we in yeah. europe have dguv and mm -hmm. i think I'll, maybe i can show it here there's also the the way how to calculate the arc but on different method and i will, I will show you why is, there's the difference yeah or not because I don't have this slide. So let's go back. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, all of the difference between the, all of this is that there are two ways uh, of selecting PPE. Mm -hmm. One is based on the open arc testing okay. method. Okay. This is ATPV, EBT, and ELIM. Mm -hmm. And you have the results in calories per square centimeters uh, most often. Okay. And the other one, so the one that is DGUV referring, is uh, box test method. Okay. And this is referring to what used to be class one, class two. Mm -hmm. uh, just it. It's in kilojoules, but technically you, you test if you pass class one or class two, which is four kiloamps, okay. half second, or seven kiloamps for half second. Okay. So there yeah. are, we have now two ways of doing this, but I would say the worldwide method is this one, and the GUV is more um, narrow to the Germany for a moment. Okay. And not always. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. and to explain uh, very briefly how it works, mm -hmm. at least of my projects. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. It should be very similar in every project, actually. Yeah, so yeah. Usually, you know, you, you contact the person to explain first what it is. Mm -hmm. So that's why I do a lot of webinars. But once we have this and people understand the risk, mm -hmm. we need to uh, gather the information to prepare the offer. Mm -hmm. So that's like, let's say, official step. Yeah. And then we usually start to collect the data on site. Yeah. Yeah, and this is very important because you need to collect actual data on site, not okay. from documentation, not from design, but physically what is done on site because that's uh, that's the very important step here. Okay, you start to make assumptions here, and all of your results will be wrong. Uh, wrong. Yeah, yeah, can be different. Yeah, and you, of course you do the system modeling. So now depends what you are using. Mm -hmm. I know some people can do it in Excel, but I always use the software. Because of the complicated systems, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's impossible always. So, like in India, in ETAP is very popular. Yeah, yeah. But you also have Dixieland. You also have SKM. You also have uh, what was the last one? Easy Power. Yeah. So there are more softwares actually uh, that you can use. So, but but it's very important to create your base for modeling. Okay. And calculation and from calculation perspective, uh, that's what I said in the very beginning. The Aquash is a combination. It's not actually one study, you actually do more. You yeah. should do short circuit with the base. 
mm-hmm. and then multiple scenarios. So to have the looking for the uh, coordination combination of the worst case, let's say. Yeah. Or at least you, you go different uh, operation mode. Mm-hmm. You do a selectivity study, which is it can be very detailed, or generally it means that you try to check uh, if your protective devices are working in coordinated way. Yeah. So like co cascading way. But that's not the best way to ex- describe it. They have mm-hmm. to be selected yeah. in multiple ways. Yeah. Uh, depends what kind of protection you are using. Yes. Uh, and then we shift to R plus analysis. Of, there is also some some small steps in between. You can do equipment evaluation, low flow sometimes. Depends really on the overall scope of the project. But those three are the minimum uh, that are required by ITPUE 1584-1. Okay. Which is the... Uh, standard for how you're supposed to do and what you're supposed to deliver as a report. Yeah. Uh, then, of course, you know, once you have the results, you you, you have to do review and uh, make any improvements. That's why you see this feedback here. Okay. Uh, run. So, mm-hmm. uh, you can stop here. <coughs> this is like existing situation and then write the report. But normally, normally it is required to uh, improve the situation. So change the settings. Yeah. Post yeah. the solution on hardware or software level, depends what is possible. Mm-hmm. and then try to mitigate uh, the energy, so make it lower. Okay. So once we have this, then we make it better on site, so it's safer in case something will happen. Uh, people still have PPE, but there is less energy, so mm-hmm. it should be better overall. Okay. And of course, you know, you have to write the report, you have to uh, prepare the ArcFlash labels, there are yeah. some requirements for it. Yeah, uh, with uh, very I do it in a very clear way, so you can see what's existing, what's recommended, and then you see the comparison between those two. Yeah, and of course, a uh, big part of it is Aquas training. Yeah, so now yeah. you have to deliver everything that you did, explain it very well, uh, uh, so people understand uh, what you did, uh, why they uh, can, how they can use it actually, and why they have to use it. Mm-hmm. How to select PPE, maybe help with this also, but but uh, maybe explain some highlights from the re- report. Mm-hmm. And then normally this is uh, the end. Okay. Let's say this kind of project, but then you, you redo it every five years or every big modification or modification yeah, of the electrical yeah. uh, system. So okay. if something changed, it has an influence on the results. So we have to uh, update the model, update the results, update the labels, transfer it to the customer. Yeah, yeah. So that's very briefly uh, when we talk about the alpha, this is very in the brief way, very fast way. Yeah, yeah, that's that's very interesting and informative. Yeah, uh-huh. I have uh, some queries. Uh, so, uh, so l- l- thanks for this uh, detailed presentation. So, for example, mainly the voltage levels. If higher the voltage, then chances of uh, riskiness is high. So that's what I believe. But most of the times, uh, the end user utilization voltage, like whatever you told, it may be 208 volt or uh, it may be like uh, maybe under 1 kV at a lower voltage side. In that case, also, chances for arcing is there. Uh, did you believe like well, that? Uh, uh, what's your opinion on that? Uh, can you speak about on this? So that's completely opposite way, uh-huh. to be honest. Yeah, yeah please, um, please describe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, it is naturally to to if you think that higher voltage is a higher risk. Mm-hmm. So that's from shock hazard point of view, that's correct because uh, you know if you have 110 kV line, mm-hmm. you don't have to touch it. You just have to be close enough. Yeah, and that's the from shock hazard point of view and creating the arc also. But uh, from arc plus energy and so how hard how bad it such accidents are, it's actually much worse on low voltage. And that's because on low voltage there are a few things. One, one is that people are not really that afraid of, of the situation. So on lo- it's low voltage, so it's it's safe. <laughs> so uh, from Afash point of view, the highest internet energy is usually on the low voltage side, not on the medium voltage side of the substation. Okay. That's because of the, of the transfer of the uh, energy is the same, but the current is much higher, and the yeah. current makes a big difference for when you calculate the Afash. Also, there is one point because on when you look, compare medium voltage to, uh, let's say, 15 kV or 20 kV or 36 kV with the low voltage situation, mm-hmm. uh, the arcing current, so arc current on, on the low voltage side can reach something down to 37% of the oh. normal short circuit current. Okay. And this is a problem because uh, if you would like to switch it off, 
your protective device, if it's not set properly in this way, mm -hmm. can detect it as an overload. Okay. And your tripping time will be much higher, higher. in this case. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's increasing the time and increasing the energy. And usually that makes it much, much, much worse. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why we mentioned that with escape time, like uh, an FPA say yeah, yeah. two seconds is usually reaction time when people start to escape. Okay. It's po if possible, of course, because if you are somewhere in the cable channel, you cannot mm -hmm. escape. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And okay. on medium voltage is different. There is small difference, but then for protective device, it's more like 10%, 20% difference, no difference almost. Okay, okay. So with respect to the, the current, uh, generally low voltage current values are higher. So with this sense, uh, it is a little bit uh, risk, uh, more in arc energy is there. That's what you mean to say, right? Due to the involvement of- Yeah, yeah. more arc energy will be on the low voltage side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you just take one to one, like on if you just academic way, mm -hmm. it will be different, it will be on the medium voltage, but we build system in the spe specific way. Okay. And usually you expect much more current on the low voltage. Okay, okay. And on the medium voltage, so just to give you comparison from the recent project, uh, people are usually afraid of medium voltage substation, but they never work on the live. Mm -hmm. It's very rare. Mm -hmm. And usually the substations are internal arc classified. Okay. So they are designed to confine the uh, arc inside in normal operation. Okay. And, and the result was something like eight calories per square centimeter. Mm -hmm. While uh, low voltage substation fit from this one, Mm -hmm. was 70 something calories oh. per square centimeter. Okay. And that was because of the protective device on the medium voltage mm -hmm. uh, side. And, and that's usually the, it's very common to see something like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then no one really cares on the low voltage. They would just open it and play with it. It's just mm -hmm. low voltage. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, it's, it's clear now. So one more thing I want to ask is, so most of the things, uh, whatever uh, the electricity we are using, that is through some form of components. It may be through motor or it may be through some bus bar. It is going running and it taking some power or energy from one place to another place. All things are through components. Generally, all the, for example, say control panel, LV panel, HV panel, and uh, some say, for example, VSD, some different uh, equipments. We have electrical equipment. All were manufactured by some OEMs. So they will take care of everything, right? While designing, while manufacturing, everything is as per the specification which the customer is providing. Then where is the chance of this arc flash? At which place it is getting generated? Where is the culprit here in the entire? Because we are bringing so many electrical devices and connecting in the network and we are utilizing the energy, electricity in different forms. Every component, every item is as per their own specifications. They are meeting as per their own specifications. So uh, did you think that connect, while interconnecting all the equipments, uh, this culprit is happening? I mean, due to imbalance, uh, this arcing is happening. Uh, what is your uh, discussion on that? Wait, wait, I lost you a bit. It was a bad connection. Okay. Okay. It's like bad connection. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if, uh, uh, because while, uh, while purchasing any, for example, if you're purchasing any transformer, the manufacturer itself suggests uh, how much, uh, how, what, what size of lug you need, what size of cable you may yep. need. So uh, like that, if, if the customer, whoever is there, if they are following the suggestions of those oh. OEMs, then it's okay, right? Then uh, where, where is the chance of this? Let's wait a minute because I cannot hear you well. Okay. Well, this is on my side. Of so, from there. so whatever, whatever I'm saying is uh, there are, uh, different electricity whatever it is there we are using in the different we are using through different components for example maybe motor maybe uh, light or some heater or some vacuum pump or so some all the things we are using through some equipments in the electricity that's what uh, the entire system and everything is built for so all the for example say transformer motor they are manufactured by some oems or uh, some oems are there who are manufacturing the equipment as per the customer specification whatever the customer specifies in this way I need, in the similar way, the manufacturers are developing and giving to the customer. So where the chances of getting this, getting this arc flash, if everything is uh, as per their own specifications, the, uh, did you think that during this the interconnection of all the components, some bad, some it's not good? I, this is the culprit uh, yeah. leading to arc flash? Yeah, so there are some uh, generally, like from the scope point of view, mm -hmm. let's say, Mm 
mm-hmm. uh, officially NFP says yeah. uh, that we go down with this calculation uh, down to 2000 amp short circuit level. Okay. And this is something if you ask your customer, they will never tell you because no one knows. And but officially it is down to 2000 amp 240 volt uh, level below this value. Uh, it's very hard to keep the arc sustained. So it will not, it will be hard to make it even. Okay. It we will see some blink, but it's like in home. Uh, okay. It will not keep um, longer than one or two free cycles. Okay. That's it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's less energy to make any harm. Yeah. And above this value, so typically in the projects, we, we usually go down to 63 amp protection level on free phase. Okay. And sometimes we go lower, but it's uh, it's on the specifically on the customer request. Okay. Usually below 63 amp, it's uh, barely nothing to see. Usually there is no no issues with it, but in some specific system, it can you can see, like with like uh, characteristic K or something, you can actually see something, mm-hmm. uh, like above 1.2 calories because that's the onset of the second degree uh, burn level, mm-hmm. and uh, from uh, mm, manufacturing point of view mm-hmm. so there is one misconception here yeah um, i have it i hear it very often uh, so we have a brand new system we build a new factory yeah so there is very low risk and we don't need it and i always have to explain okay there was one thing you know you have a new equipment which is good that it's new i don't know what exactly what people ordered they have some specification but there is no rule saying that everything has to be ordered in the same way in every company Mm-hmm. So one company will order form two uh, switch gear, the other one will order for A, for B, mm-hmm. and so on. So there is a difference be- between uh, the risk, let's say, assessment, how easy it is to create any uh, fault. Okay. Uh, is it possible like IP2X or IP57 or 56, whatever you build, like so for marine, it, it, it makes that makes a difference okay. uh, from risk perspective. You can also build the robot switch gears for arc flash also mm-hmm. for normal operation. I, be, I used to build things like this and on medium water, they are always arc classified. Mm-hmm. Uh, almost like nine on 10, 10 times they will be internal arc classified mm-hmm. built like this. Okay. And that makes a difference. So the fact that something is new mm-hmm. doesn't make a, a, it's not granted that will not create, you cannot create the arc flash there. Mm-hmm. Arclass is just the fact, okay, you can have a rat, that's what I saw recently, it will just go on the bus bars and then create a fold. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes if you just open the doors, things drops because there was maintenance, things like this. Uh, I don't know what else, uh, you have a brand new switch gear, but no one set properly the protection. So they are like default. And I saw at least few factories set like this, not switch gear, but factories mm-hmm. set on default. <laughs> It can happen like this. So yeah. all of those things combined, it, mm-hmm. it uh, it's like the comparison is very simple. Like you have a brand new car and you still can make, ne- you can die inside. <laughs> you can make an accident, makes no difference. Yeah. It still breaks under 40 meters. So that's more or less uh, ex- my ex uh, comparison. Okay. Got the fact yeah. that it's new, mm-hmm. it's nice. It's changed some of the things. It mm-hmm. makes it easier sometimes to uh, yeah. mitigate the risk. Yeah, yeah, or uh, lower the risk for things to happen. Mm-hmm. But eventually, the energy that w- if you will make an accident, if you make an arc flash, energy will be the same. Okay, and that's uh, one of the hidden uh, conclusion behind. Mm, for a moment, for time being, no one really does um, evaluation if there is a difference between the open doors or closed doors. Mm. So you have a closed doors uh, in the switch gear like something you see behind me yeah yeah a difference for the arc uh, inside but uh, from multiple tests you cannot really say uh, how big so you cannot say okay 25 kilo amps it will stay inside or it will destroy the doors and of course the doors has to be closed <laughs> when you are doing something so that's yeah. an assumption so NFPA says clearly that they don't take into account open closed doors for a moment for mm-hmm. calculation they treat it always as an open okay there are some there was some approach to it but generally speaking uh, yeah this is you, you then go to fmea uh, uh, calculations which makes it extremely more accurate uh, 
yeah, more accurate, but also it's uh, it's time consuming and then that's costs. true. That's true. That's so, true. Uh, normally we don't we don't take into account, but it should be something like this. Yeah. Because everyone is building their own switch gears different way a little bit. That's true. That's it's true. It's hard to make any guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's very nice. Yeah. For example, uh, if uh, so, can you explain what what are the different cases uh, you? Whatever you suggested back, uh, this modification, if you do, then it's okay. Can you explain one or two cases like that you suggested to your clients or anyone? Uh, by studying so, R class study, what are the mm -hmm. things you modified? So uh, uh, let's say from meeting, uh, let's say from operation point of view, mm -hmm. let's take a look. So normally when you are working and in, in Europe, uh, generally in US also the tendency is to uh, work uh, not on live equipment, but switch off everything. Mm. And let's assume that everyone works like this and we go to the main switch gear, to the main breaker, and we would like to switch it off. Uh, there is some risk, of course, and normally you will be, let's say we have something like 12 calories. Mm -hmm. So we would like to match our PP to 12 calories. Yeah. And now you would like to switch it off. So we switch it off. Technically for switching off, we don't need any PPE officially. Mm -hmm. But because there is maybe some higher risk, we say, okay, we'll, it's like five minutes, yeah, just yeah. bring it on mm -hmm. uh, and, and we switch it off mm -hmm. in case something will happen. And then we have to measure if there is absence of voltage. Okay. okay. And measurement is the risky point because you never know, you assume there is a voltage. So now you approach the uh, live uh, conductors or live uh, bus bars, mm -hmm. assuming it's live mm -hmm. so to, to do the measurements. Mm -hmm. And uh, and once we've done this, we can take off. Everything is dead. Lock out, tag out, and now we can work mm. uh, without any uh, any without PPE that is needed for aircraft. Let's say. Yeah. So we have all the protections in place. Mm -hmm. From uh, so that's from operation point of view. But also uh, there are some mm, let's say mm, tricky parts here mm -hmm. because uh, so we did everything is done is okay. Mm -hmm. Now we, for example, uh, would like to check some infrared scanning. I don't know, whatever. You would like to go approach this panel and uh, something switch off. You want to have one of those buckets out. Hmm. And NFPA has a list actually of activities. Okay. So if you look in FPA 70E, yeah. they make they will make a list which activity actually is increasing the risk where you need to have a PPE and what activity is uh, doesn't really drag you with any risk area. Yeah. So you can actually have a look on this table and, and bit, it's a bit more details okay. inside. But generally speaking, if you will take this back and you need some PPE yeah. and uh, take it off, that's done because you, it's, uh, now it's uh, isolated or drawn out. Okay. And, and then you can do whatever you want, but there are some things you have to do on live, like measurements, maintenance and things like this. And yeah. very common is uh, if you have a production you have a, a panel for production okay. and this panel has a supply side and then there is like PLC automation, some contactors, everything else. And this yeah. is in one enclosure, yeah. which is like two, three meters long, but uh, that's what you will see very often. So when there is automation guy, not electrical, he doesn't do any electrical work, but he's approaching this, he's opening the doors. So technically opening the doors, uh, if he can see something live, like electrical conductors, um, which are um, was, Ex bad uh, wrong word. We can mm. see the, the the exposed electrical mm. uh, conductors or bus bars or something like this, mm. and then they are. Then he is supposed to have the PPE. But yeah. He's not doing any work actually. He's I'm, going to make you see your connected PLC. Yeah. This PLC, 30, 40 centimeters from the main breaker. Yeah, yeah. So that's the situation when you are in the gray area, where it's. Uh, um, so what generally what I say, take a plexiglass and make mm. all the covers around so he doesn't accidentally touch anything. So mm. we reduce the risk. We don't yeah. change any energy because it's not really barrier for energy, mm. but you at least reduce the risk. So when he's opening the, the panel, he doesn't see any exposed electrical parts, live electrical parts. Yeah. And you just focus on the PLC automation, whatever he has to do. Yeah. Yeah. And if he, something there then there is an electrical guy coming in and he's uh, he has a license certification things like yeah, this. yeah that, that's true you know mm -hmm. what to do but he 
cannot accidentally create something. There yeah, is still yeah. small chance that it will it can happen. Yeah, yeah. But generally, we say the risk is low. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, very that's, nice. That's that's the approach. There is yeah. also risk assessment uh, besides this, mm. which you can actually do an FPA uh, recognized to do it when mm. you quantify the risk severity mm -hmm. and so on. And you can came up with the number saying, okay. We shouldn't have PPE, but this is so high risk that we would like to have it or put some barriers extra. Yeah, maybe yeah. do something else. Switch it off on medium voltage instead of low voltage. Yeah, yeah. Things like this. Yeah, it's clear. So, Martin, so this, uh, whatever this R class is there, is this for uh, indoor or uh, panels like this application? Uh, is it applicable for outdoor also? Like uh, substations or transmission lines or distribution lines, whatever it is there, open air. So is this applicable there also? I mean, what you say for those cases? Yeah, it is, it is applicable. So uh, the one that I showed you before, the OSHA and uh, yeah. PRI report yeah. was actually done because of the transmission distribution business. Mm -hmm. So they work a little bit different way, but they technically need also PPE for mm -hmm. their work. Okay. They, they work usually less on low voltage, but on medium voltage and higher voltages. And they have a, sometimes uh, they work on live, so that's very common. For example, in Europe, to make any maintenance on live on transmission lines, okay. they don't switch it off. No one oh, okay. want to switch it off, so they try to do it live. And uh, uh, and then they need really PPE. Oh, okay. So, but that's a little bit different because the higher the voltage, actually, the the energy is not really uh, going that high. Yes, 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 it's actually yes. low. They, they Try to depends on the tripping time of the of the device. They they try to divide in like four, eight, twenty calories. So it's not like on on four hundred kV you expect like thousand calories per square centimeters. If it will keep burning, probably it will be, but it's not that much uh, current, and and then you don't see such explosions like on low voltage. It's more yeah. like uh, yeah. open arc. You see like it's burning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you see that really you see the arc very long. Yeah, and energy is there, but it's uh, it's uh, less energetic, let's say. Yeah, yeah. Not the best word, but it's that's more or less what it is. Yeah, yeah. It's very nice. So it is is applicable up up to uh, technically they have it up to seven hundred fifty or eight hundred kV. So you have one mega volt, so it will be up to one mega volt. Just the fact is that no one really is testing. You never saw any test for it, so it's more theoretical calculations. Okay, okay. At least I haven't seen any really real tests. That's why an IEEE have a, 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 the limits for equation, like 15 kV, mm -hmm. because that's what they test. They test up to 14 something, 14 six. Okay. So that's okay. why they say, okay, up to this value, we can say this uh, results are, are matched and they are proper. Okay, okay. And uh, APRI are tested a bit higher to 30 something, uh, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very nice, very nice, Martin. So, so many things we discuss. It's a new area for me too. But yes, uh, there is a lot of potential is there, a lot of uh, importance is there in this uh, art flash. Also, I also understand it today. It's uh, mainly how we are dealing all the uh, appliances once it is installed. So, uh, so it's very nice. Thank you. Thanks for uh, your presentation and your really detailed explanation, sharing your experiences. Yeah, I, I can say this is not the end. This is just a start for us, for our combination. There are so many things to do, so many things to discuss. I will come up with some good topics, which you are already there, which you are already uh, very strong at those, so that we can share some experiences. So it will benefit many professionals who will be watching our videos. Yeah, thanks, dear. Yeah, you're, thanks you're a lot. Welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if this helps, it's a worse to doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Bye. We will meet in next video. Yeah, thank you. Hello. Have a nice day. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks for watching. This is about this art plan study. As we said, this is just starting for our big for our combination. You are going to see many more videos in the future. If you have any questions or comments or anything, then please comment in the comment section. If you have, a, if you are watching this video for the first time then do subscribe to this channel so that whenever I'm uploading videos, you will get notifications and you can click and watch it. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks for watching. We will meet in next video. Bye.